Welcome back. This will conclude um, section 4.4. .4. Uh, so now we're going to look at everything graphically. Uh, so in the notes that you downloaded, I don't know why, but Word does this sometimes where it likes to delete things after I've typed them in there. So this right here should say when the second derivative is greater than zero. So if the second derivative is greater than zero, we know f is concave up. But it also tells us something about the derivative because the first derivative and the second derivative are just one derivative apart. So that means that they have that relationship that the function and the derivative have. So if the second derivative is positive, then the first derivative is increasing. Same thing there, that should be f double prime. Wanted to delete the f, go Microsoft Word. Okay, so if the second derivative is negative, f is concave down. And the first derivative is gonna be decreasing. Okay. So now let's look at the actual sign. So if the second derivative switches from positive to negative, we know what that tells us about the, the original function. So if it switches from positive to negative and the function exists there, then we have an inflection point. Now let's look at what it says about the derivative. So if it's still switching from positive to negative and the derivative exists, then the derivative itself, like if you looked at the graph of the derivative, the derivative would have a relative max. So now let's change it. So I would switch from negative to positive. Well, the function still has an inflection point but now the derivative, since it's going from negative to positive, the derivative has a relative min. Okay, so these concepts, they are kind of interesting, especially when we start talking about the second derivative and how it relates to the first. Uh, but it's the same relationship between the first derivative and the function, because there's still only one derivative apart. Okay, so this is where it gets kind of tricky. So use the graph of the derivative, the first derivative, to locate the inflection points of f and where f is concave up and concave down. So it's important that you realize what graph you actually have. Is it the function? Is it the, der the derivative? Is it the second derivative? What, what is it? So this is the graph of the derivative and they're asking us about the function f, which we can't see. We don't know exactly what f looks like, and we're not gonna try to hypothesize and try to figure it out. We're just gonna use the graph that they provided. So if we have the derivative, and it's asking about inflection points and concavity, that means we're looking where the derivative increases and decreases and where it has relative extrema. So we have a relative extrema right here. You have a relative min. So that means you have an inflection point right there. So right when x is equal to two, you have an inflection point and your justification can say since F prime has a relative min. Because that's what we said earlier. Basically, if the derivative has relative extrema, then you've got an inflection point uh, for the graph of, of the function. And that's the only relative extrema, so that's the only one. Okay, part B 
if the second derivative is positive, you know you've got it concave up, but that means that the first derivative is increasing. So if we look at the graph of the derivative, where is this graph increasing? Well, that would be from two on. So two to infinity. So concave down is where the derivative decreases. So from negative infinity all the way up to two. And your justification for each of them for concave up since f prime is increasing and concave down since f prime is decreasing. Okay, so now let's take a look at this big old graph on the back. So again, when you have the derivative right here, this is the derivative graph, not the graph of f. We don't know what f looks like. Okay, so use the graph of the derivative and where is f concave up? So concave up means the, der the, um, the derivative itself is going to be increasing. So it's going up from negative 4 to 4. Justify your answer. So since f prime is increasing. Okay, so where is it concave down? Now look for where the graph is going down. So negative infinity to negative 4. And 4 to infinity. Since f prime is decreasing. So where does it have an inflection point? Well, that would be the relative extrema. So x is equal to negative uh, 4. And x is equal to Four. Now you can only give the x values. Don't say it's you know the y value is negative ten and ten because these are the points of the derivative, not the function. So don't give a y value there. You can only give an x, and then justify since f prime has relative extrema. Okay, so now the rest of them deal with what we talked about earlier in 4.3. So where is f increasing? So now you've got to kind of change your, your, your thought process. So f is increasing whenever the derivative is positive. So now it's going back to where is that derivative above the x-axis. So that would be this section here. So negative infinity to negative 8. And then this little hill part, so from 0 to 8. And that's since the derivative is positive. So now flip it. Where is it decreasing? It's where it's underneath. So negative 8 to 0. And 8 to infinity. since the derivative is a negative. So where does it have a relative max? So where it switches from going from positive to negative, so above to below, so right at negative eight. And then right at positive eight. So it switches from positive to negative. And the last question, where does it have a relative min? So where it switches from negative to positive or from below to above. So x equals 0. Since the derivative switches from negative to positive. All right, so that is it for section 4.4. .4.
Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, so go ahead and try the homework out and uh, we'll see you next time.